Bliss. Chapter 1. Part 1. The rush of lukewarm water against my skin felt amazing. I closed my eyes and let the water consume me, knowing it was only a matter of time before it all came to an end. Because it always did, around the five-minute mark. I could almost set my watch by it. Bang bang bang. Ah, there it was. Right on cue. Eyes still shut, I felt blindly for the shower valve, then twisted it, bidding farewell to my rare moment of freedom. Mommy, I hungry, came the whines from the other side of the bathroom door. Two small voices, not yet able to get the words out properly. I just had enough time to wrap towels around my body and my hair before I pulled the door open. I hungry, the twins declared in unison, looking up at me with big puppy dog eyes, brown just like their mother's. They had much of her features, from the dark hair to the thick eyebrows, as though by some miracle, we'd conceived them together. One of the benefits of choosing Naomi's relative as a donor. Naomi had been apprehensive at first, but when her cousin, a gay playboy who had no intentions of settling down, said he'd happily help us start our family, we'd both decided on him. She would have loved them no matter what, I was sure of it, but the genetic connection just made our family that much more whole. I shook my head, beaming from ear to ear as I looked down at my children, my twin blessings, who had been cutting my showers short for the two and a half years since their birth. Five minutes was about as much time as they granted me before they came looking for me, abandoning their favorite children's TV show. Can mommy put some clothes on first? My query received resounding petulant nose from the twins, who always seemed to be in sync with each other, from the things they said to the things they did. I'd read up on twin telepathy whilst pregnant and had been expecting it, but not at such a young age. I chuckled to myself, then led the way to the kitchen. They followed at my heel. What would you like to eat? I placed them in their matching high chairs in what had become a very small kitchen, now that our family had expanded. The apartment was up for sale, but we'd chosen a terrible time to sell, the financial climate meant that there had been no offers, none that could be taken seriously, anyway. So we were stuck for the time being. Not a major setback, as the twins were still young enough to share a room. But eventually we would need to find a house. How does oatmeal sound, huh? They nodded. With banana and raisins for you, Sky, just banana for you, Gabe, I said, mostly for my own benefit as opposed to theirs. I'd committed to memory that Gabriel was, under no circumstances, ever to be given raisins again. I'd learned my lesson the first time, after Naomi and I were finding squashed raisins all over the apartment for weeks. He must have picked them out and slipped them into his pocket before liberally discarding them. Water, mommy, he demanded. Skye promptly followed suit. What do you say? Please, they chirped excitedly. They didn't have to think about it, Naomi had drilled that into them at an early age, and they only ever seemed to leave it off with me. They decided quite early on which parent would let them get away with murder. Me, naturally. I was the biggest, most unapologetic pushover when it came to my kids. More than once Naomi had had to reprimand me for it. But she got it. She knew all about my past, knew why it was almost impossible for me to say no to my kids. I whipped together some oatmeal, set their bowls in front of them, kissed them on their foreheads, then slipped away to hurriedly get dressed before they noticed I was gone. There was a missed call and voice message from Naomi. I played it while I picked out my outfit for the day. Hi honey, sorry I left without waking you. I know you hate that, she started. I smiled to myself. I did hate that, waking up to find the bed empty and my wife gone. I never said as much, though I was sure she knew, but a stupid part of me feared she would never come back. It was incredibly foolish to think that way, considering how much she loved her family and how happy we made her, but fear is sometimes irrational like that. There was also this darkness hanging over me, insisting that the happiness I had would be short-lived. Most days I ignored it, but every now and then it crept back into my subconscious, frightening me. We're nine hours behind them, hence the 5 a.m. conference call, she went on. It won't be a regular thing, I promise. Not this early, and not once we've got everything in place. She'd recently won a ginormous international account from a Dutch company called Netter Eats, and had been working her ass off for the obstinate extremely fastidious CEO. In fact, we'd both been working hard on it. Every now and then, depending on the project, she brought me on as a consultant, for which I was paid handsomely by my old company. Same duties as before, except I only worked a couple of hours a day, and from home. It meant I got to work with my wife and earn my own money again. Not to mention it kept the creative juices flowing. Although I had no plans to return to work for good, I did like the idea of doing light work whenever I had the time. It was the perfect setup. I hope you can't hear my stomach growling. I completely skipped breakfast. I know, I know, you're probably scolding me as we speak, she laughed, and so did I, because she knew me so well. My job as her wife was to look after not only our children but their mother. If she skipped any meals, I got on her ass about it. Just so much to do. I might be late tonight. Please don't be too mad. I love you. Kiss the babies for me. By love. An idea came to me then. Fully dressed now, my hair still damp, I returned to the kitchen, to the mess my children had made of their meal. There were clumps of oatmeal everywhere, all over them, all over their chairs, all around the chairs. 
Some even managed to get over to the refrigerator several feet away. That must have taken skill. Did any of it get into your mouths? I asked, shaking my head and sighing at the cleaning I would have to do. I think you've both had enough of that now. I went to take their bowls away but was met with loud whines of protest. No. I laughed, though I really shouldn't have. It was impossible trying to teach them discipline when I couldn't keep a straight face. Everything they did fascinated me. I adored them, even when they were little terrors. We're going to see Mama, how does that sound? I said, offering them a compromise. The crying ceased instantly. I want to see Mama, Skye said, and Gabriel parroted her sentiments. I laughed again. Then let's go see Mama.